Hey friends. All right. This is another story from my upcoming book called In Borrowed Shoes. And I just want to say a little bit about the book. It's 108 short stories and a few poems that are meant to stimulate your, your own memory of your stories in life. And there is a focus on the moments, like what are we paying attention to in our lives? And so these stories come from different moments, some of them dramatic, some of them really simple and plain. But this one, <laughs> this one is called The Groover. So again, take a moment to sit back, take a little five minute break in your day and listen in. When one of my dearest friends asked me if I wanted to raft the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon for 18 days, I immediately said yes, without hesitation. At the time, I had no idea what I was signing up for, much less did I realize the trip would have me face so many fears. The idea of seeing some of the most stunning portions of the natural world, well, that was enough. My friend, she had been a raft guide in her 20s, and she'd already run the Colorado River way back when, so she knew what we were getting into, even though a lot had changed in those 30 years. One of the first things she told me was that we'd have to poop in a can We'd be carting out all of our own shit that we produced over the course of 18 days. She didn't go into any of the details about how this would happen. So in my mind, I saw myself pooping into a Campbell's soup can multiple times a day. Of course, I wondered how on earth was I going to aim right and not shit all over my hand? Not to mention, how would I cover the poop? With a plastic lid, like we use for leftover cat food stuffed in the refrigerator? And did everyone get multiple cans for the trip? Where would we stack them? And how would that smell? And, and how many cans did we get each day? So when I found out at the ranger talk just before we launched that we have a large can with a makeshift toilet seat, which we would all be pooping into, well, that actually seemed like a few steps up. I, I felt relieved to know I didn't have to hold the can while pooping and aiming. This groover seemed, well, almost civilized. We'd even have toilet paper and a pee bucket next to it. That seemed like a tricky task, however, to pee into one bucket while making sure that no poop slid out accidentally. This would require good sphincter control. When the ranger talked about the groover, he emphasized that we were not to pee in it because the more urine in there, the more it would smell and we would have one boat de devoted to all the groover containers and we'd ultimately pay for our sloppy toilet habits if we didn't get a handle on them. Peeing. Now that was a whole other topic my friend didn't mention. Before we left for the Grand Canyon, I watched the videos the National Parks created, and they explained how we have to pee into the water, into the river, and not on the land. The pH balance of our urine has a bad impact on the land, so we'd have to make sure to pee in the river at all times. I pondered my nightly habits when I heard this information. I am a serious water drinker, which means I pee buckets in the night. That term now has a new meaning. One of my last purchases before setting out on the river was a plastic Tupperware container. This became my most valuable possession during the trip, aside from sunscreen and my hat. 
If I hadn't had that little Tupperware container, the nightly routine would have been to walk all the way to the Groover to use the community pee bucket. And to do this meant to walk through sandy, rocky terrain littered with scorpions while half asleep and at night. No, I don't think so. The other option was to go stand in the river in the middle of the night and pee. Again, not my preferred choice. So every night as I squatted once, sometimes twice, and aimed into the little Tupperware container, I gave thanks for this ubiquitous, often overlooked object we all take for granted. And as always, I made sure to click the lid shut before I returned to catch the rest of my shut-eye before the sun rose. 